Greetings Earthlings, this is the Martian Master back with another special video. This is another kind of showing off what we've done. Today, however, I have a special treat for you. We are going to be going through a bunch of our old mini-games, showing you the evolution of our team game ideas. Let us begin with World War I. This is probably the worst thing we have ever uploaded to Planet Minecraft. As, as you can probably see, the combat is not all that exciting, as Minecraft is balanced for short-range combat. This map is balanced for long-range combat. The other problem is that winning is incredibly difficult. Capturing a hill is far too easy. All you have to do is hit the button of your team, and you are immediately greeted with a hill giving, given to your side. We were working on the second draft war campaign, a prototype for it, and that was when they first introduced Elytra with fireworks and crossbows. And we thought, wouldn't it be fun if there was a game where you flew around with Elytra, win fireworks, and shot each other with crossbows? There are a number of classes, but all of them but fighter are bad. The objective of this game is to capture all four hills and then kill the entire enemy team. Capturing all four hills stops the enemy team from respawning. When the entire enemy team is dead and cannot respawn, they must surrender. There is no automatic check for this, so the enemy team can hide and spawn forever and never surrender, prolonging the game infinitely. That is, if you even get to that point. Anyway, moving on. Our next foray into the team world. I have a lot of worlds. I, I've gotten even more since then. This is World War II, but it's Magical Girls. A project we've been working on for some time, and I'm proud to say we have a version that may be going up soon. But this, but it is not this version. This version is purely awful. What we did is we took the classes of World War I and added a random chance for one player on each team to be a magical girl. The random chance never works. This game is broken. There is a reason we have never released this and we never play it. The initial concept was to have a large, large teams, and each team would have their own magical girl, and the rest of the players would be soldiers. An interesting concept, but the problem is, the moment a magical girl uses an ability, it, it's all over. You, you know who the magical girl is. This map was created by simply putting a wall around natural terrain as this was not constructed on a super flat world. The basic game mode was capture the flag, capture the hill. The problem is we use the same press the button, capture the hill mechanic from World War I. The other problem is that the chest that has wool in it is a trapped chest, which is how we restock the chest with wool, allowing you to do this. This is the meta strat for this game. We declared it a feature and moved on. I'm probably going to cut out most of this footage, because this game is incredibly boring even to watch. This is a bad game mode. This is a bad game. Interesting concept, but it was... Anyway, as you can see, the, I'm just just ending it, and it's very annoying to end. This is me struggling. <sighs> we that was a learning experience. Let me tell you. 
next up on the docket is something strange. This was the last team game we attempted before using the excellent team's data pack. This is Team FFTA. You may know our minigame, FFTA, and if you don't, then that's fine. It's on Planet Minecraft. It has over 70 classes. This has five classes, one for each race in the base Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. This was also our first implementation of Slayer. For you Halo fans out there, I love Halo Reach, you know. With bigger teams, this is actually somewhat fun to play, or even smaller teams. The map is incredibly simple, but it gets the job done. As you can see, the left side of the screen is terribly cluttered because we did not turn off command feedback. Pizza Hut, go to Taco Bell. Oh man, the game's over. Yeah. You know, fun little game, fun little game. Here's a little behind the scenes view. Each team's spawn room. Here are all of the classes. Here are the command blocks that control each class. This was our first game to implement a cooldown system. The main problem we ran into is that with teams larger than 1v1, their friendly fire was always allowed because there was no way to turn it off. Moving on! The one we know and the one we love. That's why we love you. That's why we admire you. Team Test. This was the first fun and good team game that we had. It was originally meant simply as a prototype for teaming up with mobs, but it, it grew into its own thing. One of these days we will make a sequel to it. Perhaps. The classes are all in French and offer no explanation as to what they are. These buttons are for sp buying mob spawn. One team had Steve heads, one team had zombie heads. And of course, the plutonium with the overpowered class. <laughs> it is to be expected. We learned our lesson from World Wars 1 and 2. This was simple, and it still is. One hill in the middle of the map, standing on it gives you points. First one to reach a certain amount of points wins. This also used the excellent and very helpful team data pack because the Minecraft Rift developers have not yet added native team functionality to Minecraft Bedrock Edition. We used a data pack where someone else filled in the gap. Yeah. Look at that. How, how is that balanced? How is that balanced? Come on. <laughs> think, Martin. Think. Big brain. <sighs> As usual, I made all the classes. I have to. Think, I must give credit where credit is due. However, the plutonium was the one who originally thought of using the execute command in the way we do now. This game gets rather hectic, and green team wins. Or oh no, this one. Oh no. This was our final attempt at making a sequel to World War One. This is, well, it's gone through a lot of iterations, but I like to call it World War II Naval Combat. It initially started out as simply World War I 2, which had a battleship and a submarine, and then we decided, why not make a naval combat if we have a battleship? Oh, and I fell out of the world. That is a problem that we had on that map. Oh yeah. The, the ready buttons instead of saying like in team test. Blue team is ready, red team is ready. It says, Britain has declared war. 
and the other one says, says Franz Ferdinand has been murdered. Oh, this map was bad. We were experimenting with World Edit, and it didn't turn out very well. Also, we had allied mobs, but the problem we had was that we gave each of the mobs the same classes as players, which had some interesting results. Not good results. Submarine versus Battleship, the classic fight. When you're underwater as submarine, you gain invisibility, or you're supposed to. And when you're a certain number of blocks below a block of air, you gain water breathing. We didn't play that game for very long. It's interesting to look at as a step in our progress, but like the other world wars, not very fun. Now, Infection Test. Infection Test, we probably could have released. Except that it's awful. It's not awful in that the game mode is broken, although it's not the best. It was made sort of as a sequel to Team Test. This is Infection Test. The, the game mode is simple. Infection from Halo. That's zombies from Call of Duty. Any, any typical game. It has all of the Team Test classes for human, and for zombie it has four new classes. I don't think we'll be using the four new classes ever again. That's one of our classes for the infected. Uh, I believe it's called Jacques de Flèche, something like that. Uh, anyway, it translates to Jack the Ripper. The, the zombie classes are either entirely overpowered or entirely useless. It doesn't really make sense to have a tank and a support and a ranged and a melee as a zombie because zombies should really just have melee. This, however, is RTS test. We did release this and it is very fun. You select which type of mob you want to spawn at the command blocks in the corners. Then the snowball will summon a building that spawns that type of mob for your team. The goal of the game is to kill the enemy team's cowmanders. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant pun, by the way, thank you very much. By getting your mobs to kill them. So I believe this is best played as a 1v1. One RTS guy versus one RTS guy. And they duel it out, using their mobs on the ground. This, of course, was also made possible by the excellent team's data pack. Uh, it is very fun, though, to watch those mobs just go at it. The AI is kind of bad in Minecraft, but we've gotten used to it at this point, to the point where it's actually more interesting. Another interesting fact about this game, an interesting mechanic, is that you can only spawn buildings near, near your mobs. We do a very interesting command block check each time you throw a snowball to see if there's a mob within range on your team. Eventually the mobs pile up and you get giant wars right by the Calmanders. I thought I hit the creeper button, but okay, a skeleton will work. just crashed. I did not, but I did eventually crash, and we were unable to finish that game in a sad twist. Now, the next thing, the final thing for this showcase. This is Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Team Combat. This is a very early build of it, much different from the one you will find now on Planet Minecraft slash The Martian Master, which I will leave a link to in the description. Oh, the Underworld. Oh, the Underworld. We have had so many revisions of this. Initially, it started out as an idea of a two-sided raid. So, each team is trying to complete the opponent's raid, essentially. 
whoever beats the enemy's final boss first is the victor. This didn't pan out. What we eventually turned it into, which, what this is right now, is, as much as it pains me to say it, somewhat akin to our World War I game mode. There are four hills. You capture the hills by standing on them, not by pressing buttons. We learned our lesson in that regard. When you have the hill captured, it'll spawn your mobs. When all four hills are captured, it will spawn the enemy's final boss, which is a cow. And when you kill the enemy's cow, you will win. This was a bad game mode. We eventually changed it into something else, which was one hill. And the first one, and I don't know if you've ever played Paladins, because I don't know if you're even watching this, but it's very similar to Paladins. You capture the point in the middle, then instead of pushing the payload, you have a certain amount of time to go and kill the enemy's cow. If you don't, they get one point. If you do, you get one point. You, get, you also get one point for capturing the hill to begin with. First one to four points wins. This had many problems. Chief among them was that the timer counting down how long you had to kill the cow never worked. This left us with some issues. So we finally changed it literally about a week before we released it to a capture the flag game mode, which is in the game right now. And next update, no spoilers, there is an update coming to Team A2. I am also trying to port it to Java, which is incredibly difficult because my documentation is not as thorough as the documentation for the timer. But it is in the works. So is the update. We have all the manga classes finished. We just need to work on the maps. We have two maps done, one map left, and one of the two maps, the game mode is somewhat broken, as is typically the case. So we'll be looking forward to the day when we unveil the final masterpiece. Until then, thank you for watching. And, as always, Majisa Dixon.